All right, well, uh, welcome back to my studio, or if you're new here, welcome. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, today I'm going to uh, discuss uh, a permit uh, plans that I've been working on. If you liked the video, hit those like buttons. If you didn't like it, uh, think about subscribing because when you subscribe, you get to see the next video. So hopefully on the next one, you'll see, okay, uh, uh, this is a little bit better, but I'm kind of trying to do some stuff about the work that I've been working on lately, and that's been in um, BricsCAD. So most of this is going to be uh, stuff about uh, drawing in BricsCAD. I hope you enjoy it. So here's the rest of it for just the... Uh, for the cat part. I'm working on a plan check comment that I got back from the city of Carlsbad. This is for a room addition that we're doing um, plans for and I submitted the uh, plans three weeks ago. I got comments back early part of this week. The comments were about there were about nine items um, for architectural which is me in my area and then five items for the structural. So it was actually not too bad. It was mostly just um, they had some um, uh, notes that they wanted added to the uh, plans. Um, but one of the comments was filling out this form. It's called a climate action plan. The city of Carlsbad has their own uh, checklist that you have to fill out saying what they want you to do in the event that um, you're building enough uh, costs. So um, one of the questions that you fill out in the climate action plan is you got to give them a permit value. Um, so I, I think this one's probably worth about a hundred thousand. I think it's probably what we'll put it on there. And um, it has a lot of plumbing. It's going to be a, uh, extensive plumbing. And then the room addition part probably isn't that big. It's about 200 square feet. And I would think that's probably around 50,000, maybe 60, but we're, we're easily above $60,000. So we'll list that. And then uh, uh, I just checked off a couple things so I could run through this. And so if you do uh, above 60 or an alteration addition, and so we're going to do section 1A and 4A of this uh, climate action plan. So we come down here and then it gives you the instructions on what to do. Uh, you can fill that all out, but uh, mainly, so 1A, so here we are at 1A, so we checked that. I checked off the A and uh, we're, our uh, evaluation is, uh, more than 60,000, same thing. And then uh, this building was built in 1960, and it had been renovated in uh, in 81 or 87, but um, I'm gonna list it as 1960, and I'm gonna say, instead of attic installation, we're going to do duct sealing, um, because we have to test the ducts anyways, and it, and it looks to me like uh, they may have replaced the duct work, or, well, the unit, the, um, the furnace doesn't look like it was replaced, but, I was, oh, no, it does, because it was, uh, the um, label on it showed that it had been replaced in uh, 2006. So it looks like the duct sealing was probably done then when they did that. So I'm hoping that um, for the duct sealing, this would be the easiest route. And then also we have to test it. So I'll put a note on the plan saying, you know, to, to seal the ducts and then uh, test with the HERS as per the HERS requirements. And then um, we don't fill out section B. So we are 1A and 4A. So this was 1A, so we skip B. We skip uh, photovoltaics, that's two. Um, and then we skip uh, water heating because we're not uh, 3A, we don't fill out that. And then uh, come down here to electric vehicle charging. So for the electrical vehicle charging, it's new construction and major alterations. And so because it's over 60,000, it's considered a major alterations. It says right here, one and two family dwellings, valuation over 60,000. Um, so we're gonna comply with that. So I have to pick one, so I'm gonna uh, choose this one. And you know, it's an old service panel, 200 amps. Uh, they've got um, solar connected to it. We'll have um, a sub panel installed that's going to be connected. So that's taking up a couple breaker spaces there. And then we've also got uh, the existing, um, probably the existing single family house that was there, which was a two story, a three bedroom. And that, um, 
that probably had, you know, probably at least eight to 12 spaces that were taken up. And then uh, um, we got to add in additionally, uh, as part of the um, um, energy compliance, they want a, uh, an, a circuit installed for a future water heater that's electric. So in case somebody wants to put in a heat pump, like a heat pump water heater, I would imagine that would be what you would use that for. Um, so I have to have them install that. So we need two spaces for that. And so, you know, I mean, I could probably run the calcs on the service panel to see it's 200 amps uh, um, for about 2,600 square feet. And uh, I would uh, think that a 200 amp panel would probably cover that. So I don't think we're going to have any issues with the uh, size of the panel, but I'm going to do that test check next just to make sure, especially being that it's all gas uh, appliances. So um, uh, the stove, the uh, washer and dryer, the uh, furnace, definitely the furnace and water heater were gas. I don't, I'm not really sure about the stove and that. I didn't really check for that. But uh, that's probably one of the things that we might have to look at again. And But for now, I'm just going to uh, assume that it's going to work. So we're going to have to put in a dedicated space. So um, this was the interesting thing about this was uh, I looked up the code on this and it doesn't mention major alteration. So that's something that was added by the city. And we have to pull up the city code. So I went and I found uh, the city ordinance. So uh, this is from the local codes, local energy codes. So uh, in the city ordinances, they mention the, ma the major uh, renovations. And then they say here for compliance, um, you have to comply with either uh, this 4.1 or 4.2. Uh, for new construction and major re renovations. So we got to do one or the other. So 4.1, if we come down here, dot one, new family dwellings, install a listed conduit EV ready space. So what we've got to do is uh, uh, provide the conduit from the main service panel over to the garage. And then we put in an EV uh, ready space for it. And then um, we can mark it EV ready. So if they get an electric car or something, It'll be ready for that. And I'll probably put it over by the door so that they could actually drape the car, the charger uh, cord out through the bottom of the garage door and plug it in. And that's probably an option. But if we go to two, um, I would say two doesn't apply. Two is for a new multifamily. Multifamily dwellings are generally um, um, three uh, three residences or more on a lot. So. That'd be multifamily. So we're not multifamily, but we are single family. So one and two family dwellings. So that's what we'll be complying with. So today I'm going to be adding the EV ready space. So we're going to go into the drawing.
Coke Zero. Okay, so here we have it. We've got our um, proposed floor plans. So this is all proposed, so I'm going to have to do this. Uh, that's what we're proposing. Okay, and uh, we've now added um, some of the conduit runs. I had to show it on here because uh, I couldn't get the um, day box location in there very well. And I think maybe I might go back and change that to an actual J box because it doesn't need to be a big cabinet. Although for a one inch conduit, you know, you're going to probably end up with a six by six, maybe six by six, four inches deep at least indoor. And so here we are, route empty conduit to feature uh, EV charger. This one is route uh, just the uh, non metallic. Um, um, seal the cable, un I mean, uh, see the cables. And one of them is a spare, so we got a spare over there. Plus, we need 120 volts, so putting that in. Yeah. Everything you need to do this plan. It's going to be a nice uh, little electrical job for somebody. Pretty clean. Hook up some stuff, run some power. find those comments here we go all right so um here's oh from the action plan so we're back to the uh action plan so we're going to say the action plan we're going to item one Okay, so uh, a checklist, energy efficiency, so we're doing duct sealing. We want to look at that Carlsbad Municipal Code. Oh, Carl's bad municipal code. Wait, this other one had it pretty good. Uh, is that 821? No, we're 830. Okay. Which one do we want to look up here? Um, not the one we want. 1830. 1830.06. 1830.06. Okay, 1830.06. So this is the additions, alterations. Okay, so uh, we're going to do duct sealing.
New supply register. Connect to existing supply duct. Provide duct sealing per CC 150.2B. Okay, so um, a lot of people just put notes in on the do a um, multi-liter line, do the notes on the drawings, but. I might find that clutters things up too much. Like I've already got stuff for the conduits and everything. Um, but uh, if I add a whole bunch of notes in here, it's going to be really confusing. So I like to use keynotes. And so with the keynotes, you can really um, you can really add some stuff to it. Okay, here we are again. Back to this drawing, so let's print it over. I made some changes. And the way that I like to do this is I'll do the work here on the um, paper space. So if you notice, my paper space is white, but if you go to my viewport, so that's a viewport. So this one's a viewport. This is a viewport. I got three of them here. There's a viewport. And what the viewport's looking at is it's taking layers out of this one here, which has been x ref so, I mean, you could have anything from up here down to here in that drawing. For the most part, it's right in that target area right here. And actually, I could clip it, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. Yeah, that was one. So my one is a demo. Two is the... Um, floor plan. So this is what we're going to be doing. So this has a lot of information on what you're going to, what the type of work that you need to do. So everything I've added today is uh, additional work that we weren't anticipating, but uh, is required by the city. And it's mostly energy code stuff, so um, no way to get around it. You're going to, you're going to require, as, there's a few exceptions, but um, nothing that applies to what we're doing. So uh, it's not bad, but uh, it does add a little bit to the cost. Okay, now, um, save that. I can get rid of this base floor. I think I'll do that. I'm going to save it if it hasn't been saved. Then we were going to print this guy. Print. Okay, so uh, here's our new drawing, and we've pretty much covered all the bases. So I added quite a few notes uh, per the plan check requirements. I move that up a little. Um, this looks pretty clean to me. On the title sheet, I had to add this. Special inspections. So they wanted to see, well, it was mainly just the uh, energy compliance stuff. But I went ahead and did that. And then I went ahead and put in the structural. And then I like to reference back to their sheets because um, just because I have three items on there, they may have somewhere a note that says, uh, um, they need special inspection somewhere else that I'm not aware of, but I think I've coordinated it and put it on there okay for them. And uh, so that's going to be our, uh, that will be our project for today. Let's start with a title sheet. So we're going to print title sheet. Yeah, okay, let's replace them. All right. 
So now we are plotting. So we're going to start plotting each one of these plans. And there's a way you could batch plot them. Um, but I've just found that for me, it's just easier to go in and open the file, look at what I'm plotting, plot it, and then review it again. See a second look. And my next one is the A100. So I really want to open that. Um, A100. So what A100 is, is a site plan. And so on the site plan, I had one comment to add a, we had to add a setback on there, easement. That's not a setback, it's actual easement. So you can't build anything in that area. So you see there's absolutely nothing in the easement. That's kind of tricky because this is uh, pole lines. So there's six feet on this side and six feet on that side that have an easement. Anything goofy. I probably don't need this stuff on the demo. So I want to take that out. It's new electrical, it doesn't belong on there. It's supposed to be existing. Okay, so probably um, to go in and air control. Okay, so this is going to be an XRF layer. So we're looking for base floor, new electrical. New electrical. And, um, we can freeze it in just this window. So instead of doing the whole drawing, if I did it over here, I'd freeze the whole drawing, but we don't need that. So I'm going to freeze it in that window. This one, we're going to do the same thing. A space site. Base floor, new electrical. Oh, there we go. Frozen. Save it. I'm going to print this guy. Okay, we've got our print um, set up, our print style set up and everything. So it's all ready to go. We just print it. I didn't get any plan notes on my demo. I actually didn't plan check my plan, so I was kind of wondering what that's all about. Okay. This one we've looked at several times. This should be good. I went ahead and put that on there again. It's identified here. Because I really want to keep the electrical on this side, but I had to put that one in. 30. That's why I didn't number them against, you know, the, with the same numbers for proposed versus um, floor plan versus electrical plan. Now this is our roof plan. It's on the roof plan. Exterior elevation. So um, this hasn't changed. This stayed the same. There weren't any comments that affected that. Let's go ahead and print this. In case you're wondering, the reason why the, um, the installation on the wall is R21, or the installation in the attic, is going to be an R30. 
R30 there. I probably should put a note up here for R30. Um, is because when you're in an attic space, you're collecting a lot of um, hot air in this attic space, which increases the temperature threshold there. So you need more insulation to push back against that storage or the increase because there's no very little ventilation going on here. You know, um, it's all passive, so it can get really hot. So you want to have that be insulated better. This was going to be an R21 when it was like that, but now we've, we've made the ceiling flat. So now I've got to put it in as an R30. I guess I could put it up this way and do R21, but easy enough just to leave it at R30. We'll make a note up here that it's R30. Really not much difference. R30, R21, a couple of inches of insulation. Okay, R21, R30 up here, R21, R30, R30, R21. Okay, I'll print it one more time. What do you think of that, huh? Beautiful. Here's my detail drawing. I had to add a couple notes to that too about the stucco. Wasn't enough to say two layers of building paper. I put a note up here, stucco to be three coats minimum applied over metal lath with two layers of grade D paper and then reference that code section. I kind of think that um, Somebody's doing stucco is going to probably be a professional at it. I, I doubt this would be a job that an amateur would try to do on their own, but maybe. I guess, you know, if you got a general contractor who wants to try it. Okay, so let's print this. G sheets. This is just notes. I didn't make any changes on any of this, so it's going to be a straight print. Mandatory standards. Green building. Green mandatory measures. I think they're going to do away with all this stuff one day. Okay, so now I've got all my sheets in one file. So this is my plot file, and I'll, I'll date the uh, dates that I'm doing plots so that I can go back and find all those. But basically, everything up here is no um, so good to me. And I could just delete a lot of this stuff. That's why sometimes I'll put in here what they were for, if it was something special. Um, down here, the IPFs or uh, IFPs are issued for permit drawings. So that's what we're working on today. We're going to be resubmitting these plans. So we'll use something like a uh, Rev1. Okay, so what I want to do is combine them. So I use a uh, uh, PDF editor. So you could do just about anything. This is uh, Foxit. I happen to like that one because you only have to buy it once and then you own it. But I go, um, got one that was WPS Office. It's got a PD editor in that and I haven't used it yet. It keeps pestering me about buying a subscription. Okay, so I don't know that I have those placed right now. Okay, so let's try this again. Mine files. Okay, I want to first of all put this one on the very top. 
And then we had notes that came afterwards. All our notes, because nobody ever reads those. If you put them at the end, they won't get looked at. Okay, so now we've got the drawings. Nicely packaged together, back to the way it was. Let's plan check, show them where it made changes. Okay, so it's all ready. There's my plan. Ends up being 21 megabytes. Too big to email, maybe. So what we can do is with this one, I could make it smaller. Or get it down to 18. Okay, so that wraps up today's video. I don't really have anything else to add other than, you know, hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, you got to subscribe. So like and subscribe. And when you subscribe, you'll be able to get the next video uh, notice. And you might like that one better. So it's worth subscribing if this stuff is interesting to you. And uh, if not, you know, I appreciate that you watched it this long. And I uh, just want to thank you for that. So I don't have anything more to say other than this is going to be RB signing out.